hello friends uh, today we will discuss the previous year question and so first question is uh, what is not true about erythrinosis okay so here uh, first it is in gram negative bacillus which is caused by erythrinia pestis and see point option is by erythrinia intercolitica and erythrinia pseudotuberculosis so the answer here is it is caused by erythrinia pestis okay so some points here i want to say is so always remember uh, if there is an uh, erythrinia pestis it is always related to bubonic plague septicemic plague or the uh, bubonic bubonic and septicemic so these are the three types of plagues which is caused by erythrinia pestis whereas uh, this erythrinia intracolitica and erythrinia pseudotuberculosis usually causes so self limiting diarrhea or ileitis okay so it is most commonly related to the abdominal symptoms so always remember erythrinia pestis is bubonic plague and there will be history like uh, any inguinal lymphadenopathy or and there is an important strain called as a basin strain that is specific for the erythrinia pestis so there will be a history like a farmer had a recent bite and after that the vasen strain shows in gram negative uh, bacillus and he also presented with inguinal lymphadenopathy so typically the question will be like this so there must not be any confusion for erythrinia pestis okay so whereas this erythrinosis is a, a term used for the infection caused by Erythrinia intercolitica and pseudotuberculosis. Okay. So here the answer is Erythrinia pestis, and it is characterized by diarrhea, enteritis, ileitis, and septicemia. So among the two options, so the Erythrinia intercolitica it is most common than the pseudotuberculosis in causing the erythrinosis infection. Okay. So next question is. Okay. So uh, here, all are true about Bart Bartonella, Bartonella quintana except, sorry, okay. So first, it causes a trench fever, not detected by wheel flicks reaction, recurrence is common, tick is a vector. So what they are asking here, which is a false statement, okay. So okay, we will go by uh, all the options. So first, it causes a trench fever, yes. So it is not detected by wheel flex reaction. Yeah. So the wheel flex reaction is mainly for the rickettsial infection and the scrub typhus. Okay. So it is not for Bartonella species. So recurrence is common. Yeah. So here what is the wrong statement is tick is a vector. So what is a vector here? It is a louse. Okay. So that is a false statement. So so coming for the third question okay this is a easy question so painless genital ulcer in male with averted margin is seen in so here the answer always remember painless ulcer it is in syphilis okay so here the option is straight you can make it as syphilis okay next point here is actinomyces is sensitive to a streptomycin, statin, penicillin, and iroxurudin. Yeah, it is an, the pencil. Uh, penicillin, it is a drug of choice for actinomycosis. And another point here you want to remember here is so it is an, uh, there is a specific term that is an, it is the most common form, it is a cervicofacial actinomycosis. And there is another term which is called as a sundry appearance. Okay. So, and in BHI agar, it usually shows as in spidery colonies. So, these are the points you want to remember for the actinomycosis. So, this point which I have been uh, saying, these are all asked in some of the uh, previous question. And these are some of the hint for diagnosis. Okay. So, sundry appearance. These are the points you want to always remember for actinomycosis. Uh, next it is an it's a clinical question so a pregnant lady presented with 
cervical lymphadenopathy and she was prescribed the spiramycin but was non compliant uh, the baby has intracerebral calcification and what is the probable diagnosis okay so here the options are toxoplasma cme crypto and rubella so how you can rule out this the first it is a cervical lymphadenopathy and spiramycin so among the option the spiramycin is a drug of choice for yeah it is a toxoplasmosis and since the patient is not taking the drug the baby had developed a congenital toxoplasmosis that is the baby presents with an intracerebral calcification and the most common presentation for the toxoplasmosis it is a cervical lymphadenopathy okay so uh, here the answer is clear so that is a cervical lymphadenopathy and uh, so you can the, here the option is toxoplasmosis so there will be some clue in the questions you want to pick it out okay so here it's a cervical lymphadenopathy is a clue and the spiramycin because it is a drug of choice right so that and the baby had intracerebral calcification that this and present in the congenital toxoplasmosis so these are the hint points okay so thank you friend